Okay, this is an article written by ChatGPT. Um, I'll give it some prompts. I'll read it out. You can tell me what you think in the comment section. Celebrating English heritage and tapestry of traditions, customs, habits and food. England, a land steeped in history and brimming with cultural richness, boasts a, boasts a vibrant tapestry of traditions, customs, habits and food that reflect the character and spirit of the, its people. From the quaint charm of afternoon tea to the jubilant celebrations of national holidays, English customs are, delightful, are a delightful blend of the old and new, creating a unique culture, landscape, sorry, a cultural landscape that is both charming and enduring. The warmth of English hospitality. One of the most cherished <clears throat> English customs is the tradition of afternoon tea. This delightful ritual, typically enjoyed between 3.30 and 5 p.m. is a very, is, uh, sorry, 5 p.m. is a time to relax and indulge in se a selection of fine teas, delicate, delicate sandwiches, sorry, scones with cottage cream and jam and an array of pastries. It's most, it's more than just a meal. It's an experience that epitomizes English hospitality and the nation's love of convivial gatherings. Dance and celebration. The English are known for their spirited celebrations and traditions, traditional dances. Morris dancing, with its lively music and intricate choreography, choreography, sorry, is a vibrant display of folk cultural culture. Sorry, of folk culture. Dancers adorn in bells and ribbons, and perform energetic routines that have been passed down through the generations. Similarly, maypole dancing, a joyful activity performed on May Day, sees dancers weaving ribbons around a pole, celebrating the arrival of spring with colour and enthusiasm. So I've got itchy nose. It always happens when I make a video. It's annoying. <clears throat> Guy Fawkes or Bonfire Night is a unique English celebration held on November 5th. 5th. And no... We were not setting off fireworks when Joe Biden won the election in 2020. Uh, anyway, where was that? This event commemorates the following, sorry, the foiling of the gunpowder plot in 1605 with communities across the country lighting bonfires and setting off fireworks. The sky is filled with brilliant colours and the air with so and the earth with sounds of laughter and festivity as family and friends gather to enjoy the spectacle. Royal pageantry, England's rich royal history is celebrated through grand ceremonies like the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace and trooping of the colours. This one, yeah, it's annoying. Uh, trooping of the colours. These events showcase. Uh, precision and pageantry of British Armed Forces attracting visitors from around the world who are eager to witness these impressive displays of tradition and discipline. Unique local traditions. In the heart of Gloucestershire, the quirky yet thrilling tradition of cheese rolling see I didn't know about that to be honest, draws both participants and spectators brave competitors chase around Chase a round of double Gloucester cheese down a steep Cooper's Hill in a race that is as entertaining as it is exhilarating. This eccentric event perfectly captures the English spirit of fun and adventure. Festival, sorry, festive celebrations. The English calendar is dotted with festivals and holidays that bring communities together in joyous celebration. Christmas is particularly magical time. With homes adorning, adorned in festive decorations, carol singing, and the exchange of gifts. We don't get carol singers around here. Easter is another significant ho significant holiday marked by church services, egg hunts, and family feasts. Most of this stuff we don't. Where I'm from, they don't do it anymore. They haven't done for a long time. I remember carol singers when I was a really small child, but I mean I've never gone and done it myself. I, I, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't really be interested in doing it, but I do remember sort of like mid eighties people still doing it then. But you know, it's been a long time anyway. Anyway, Halloween brings out the playful side of English of the English. That's more American though, Halloween actually. Anyway, whatever, I'll read it. With children donning costumes and going trick or treating while remembering well Remembrance Day on November the 11th is a solemn occasion of honour and sacrifice of those who fought in wars observed with ceremonies and moments of silence. Uh, going back to uh, Bonfire Night, people used to do a thing called Copper Calling, which was like the English equivalent of um, Trick or Treat, except they did it on Bonfire Night instead of uh, you know Halloween, obviously. Uh, that's... I don't... Nobody around here does that anymore. I, I bet if I asked People like, you know, younger than me about that, but they won't even know what it was. But yeah, copper calling it was called. Um, I remember people come to our house and doing that a couple of times. But I think really, when I was growing up, it was the tail end of all of it then, really, to be honest. Anyway, uh, a culinary journey through traditional English food. Uh, people are going to be like, oh, English don't have any food. It's so rubbish. How do you know if you've never eaten it? But anyway, whatever. England's culinary heritage, um, and, and the other thing is as well, a lot of American people think we've got bad food because they came here during the Second World War when everything was rationed. Well, you know, if you haven't got proper ingredients, it's not going to be good, is it? But anyway, whatever. England's culinary heritage is as rich and di as diverse as its historical traditions. Sorry, I'll read that again. England's culinary heritage is as rich and diverse as its history. There you go. Traditional English food offers a delectable journey through time, showcasing a blend of flavours, comforting dishes and regional specialities that have been enjoyed for generations. From savoury pies to sweet puddings, the traditional fare reflects the warmth and hospitality of English culture. The heart of English cuisine... Savoury delights. One second. Wish this had stopped. It's so irritating. Every time I put the thing on, I get like an itchy nose or an itchy forehead or whatever. <coughs> anyway, whatever. One cannot talk about traditional English food without mentioning the quintessential Sunday roast. This beloved meal, typically served on Sundays, hence the name, afternoons, uh, features roast meat, Often beef, lamb or chicken, sometimes turkey, depends where you go. Uh, accompanied by crispy roast potatoes, Yorkshire pudding and an assortment of vegetables, gra gravy made from the mixed juices and a dollop of horseradish or mint sauce completes this comforting dish. It's my favourite meal, by the way. Another staple is fish and chips, a dish that has become synonymous with English cuisine. Freshly fried fish, usually cod or haddock, is paired with thick cut chips, fries, it says fry in brackets, but we call them chips in England, and often served with mushy peas and tartar sauce, or ketchup if you may. This meal is best enjoyed wrapped in paper from a seaside chippy where the salty sea air uh, adds to the experience. People don't do that. They don't do that anymore. It comes in a polystyrene tub nine times out of ten. Shepherd's pie and cottage pie are also classic comfort foods. These hearty dishes consist of minced meat, lamb, or she lamb for shepherd's pie and beef for cottage pie, cooked with vegetables and cre rich creamy gravy, topped with a layer of creamy mashed potatoes and baked, golden baked to golden perfection. Regional specialities and hearty fare. England's regions boast their own unique culinary treasures. Cornish pasties from Cornwall are a popular portable meal featuring a flaky pastry with beef, potato, swede and onion. Similarly, Lancashire hot pot is a traditional stew from the northwest made with lamb, onions and sliced potatoes, slow cooked to tender perfection. From the West Midlands, West Midlands comes the Balti. That's not English, so I'm not reading it. Uh, what have we got here now? Sweet treats and desserts. England's sweet offerings are equally indulgent. Sticky toffee pudding is a moist sponge cake 
made with finely chopped dates, covered in rich toffee sauce and often served with vanilla ice cream or custard. This dessert is a true crowd pleaser with a warm, comforting flavour. Another classic is Spotted Dick, a steamy suet pudding dotted with dried fruits, typically served with custards. Despite its amusing name, the dessert is a beloved part of English culinary tradition. Eat and mess. A light and refreshing dessert made from a mix of strawberries, crushed meringue, meringue and whipped cream. This is a treat. This sorry, this treat is said to have originated at Eton College and is especially popular in the summer months. Traditional tea time treats. Tea time in England is not complete without a selection of sweet and savoury treats. Scones and clotted cream and jam are a must have often enjoyed during afternoon tea. Hasn't it already said this point or whatever? These crumbly buttery pastries are split in half and generously topped with clotted cream and strawberry jam, creating a delightful balance of texture and flavour. Victoria sponge cake, named after Queen Victoria, is another tea time fl- favourite. This light airy sponge cake is filled with jam and cream, dusted with powder, sugar and a staple of English baking. Pubs and hearty fare. Traditional English pubs offer a, co- offer a cosy atmosphere and a menu of hearty dishes. Bangers and mash featuring sausages served with mashed potatoes and onion. Gravy, onion gravy is a pub classic. Plowman's lunch, cold meal of bread, cheese, pickle and ham or other cold cuts showcase the simplicity and satisfaction of English fare. Steak and ale pie. With its flaky pastry crust, rich savoury filling and a, another is another pub favourite often enjoyed with a pint of local ale. Don't like ale, it's too strong. Conclusion. Traditional English food is, celebra- is a celebration of comfort, f- flavour and history. Each dish whether savoury or sweet, tells a story of the nation's past and its evolving palate. From the warmth of a Sunday roast to the sweetness of a sticky toffee pudding, English cuisine offers a culinary journey that is sorry that as that is as satisfying as it is delicious. Whether enjoyed in a cosy pub, at a seaside chippy, or during an afternoon tea, traditional food embodies the heart and soul of England's rich culinary heritage. The customs and traditions and habits of England are a testament to their rich cultural heritage. Here we go again. It's like I start doing something and I, I, I don't know what it is. I just can't ignore it. I have to witch myself. It annoys me. Anyway, the customs, traditions and habits of the English people are a testament to their rich cultural heritage, enduring spirit from the elegance of afternoon tea to the exuberance of national celebrations. England's cultural practices are a source of pride and joy. These traditions not only preserve the nation's history, but also foster a sense of community and belonging, making England a land of warm and hospitable hospita- hospitality, spirited festivals and timeless charm. The English people's warmth, resilience and passion for their heritage shine through in every aspect of their culture, making their traditions and food a delight and experience for all who encounter them. Okay, so I hope that was interesting, that video. Uh, sorry, I had to keep scratching my mouth, my nose. Uh, just really, if I don't do it, then I, I can't concentrate on what I'm reading. Um, so what I was thinking was, I could make some more videos like this, but I'll, I'll do like maybe, I'll do a town, like maybe I'll do Manchester. The history of Manchester, you know, just like, it won't be that in depth, but just like some interesting facts about Manchester, like when it was formed and things like that. It was a Roman town. Every town that was a Roman town has the name Chester in it, in case you didn't know. Um, anyway, what was I saying? So, yeah, I could do that. Um, and if you have any suggestions, like I'll, I'll do Manchester maybe if I do it, and then maybe I'd do Liverpool or Birmingham or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it properly. But if you have any, su- have any suggestions, you can put them in the comment section. Um, you know, that would help me, you know, if you give me any ideas. Uh, but if you got this far anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't boring. Or, you know, I'm, sometimes I'm not very good at reading out, I know. So 
I hope that didn't put you off. Obviously, if you got this far, then it can't have done, can it, really? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching, and bye for now. Bye.